this valley is flooded, we'll lose a big piece of who we are as, as Denizab people. All of this is our territory. In the 20th century, because of so much genocide and so many generations of destruction of our culture by the colonizers, what little I was given was just a tiny shred of what should exist. This valley represents one of the last critical components of the ecosystem has been under attack for decades. And that's one of the reasons why we've been fighting so hard to save it. The federal and provincial governments made this decision despite the fact that they knew it would have disastrous impacts for the indigenous peoples who depend on this river, who depend on the land surrounding it, to practice their, their culture and tradition. There's burial sites, there's stories that are connected to land that help create identity. There's medicines within the valley, there's berries that we pick and harvest, and then it's a migratory corridor, so the impacts of that alone are really scary, like the long-term impacts, thinking about the young people that I know from communities that depend on hunting and trapping. It really hurts me to know that they're building the site C. We've been voicing our opinion about it. It will destroy a lot of our land and a lot of our, um, our trap lines. My great-great-grandfather, Chief McCainitra, signed the treaty because he was thinking about future generations. He was trying to make sure that we had something. We could still live off the land if we needed to, that we had water that we could drink from. It was ensuring that a lifestyle could, could carry on. Pretty soon you're going to have nothing left. And what's going to be there for my grandchildren or my great-grandchildren? I would rather have them be able to hunt and fish and, and pick medicines in that area than have to drive by there and see a big hydroelectric dam that has destroyed everything. If we let these last tiny little spaces go, we lose the ability to teach future generations how to live in balance with the natural world. And that's a lesson that matters in the 21st century. That's a lesson that is globally relevant, that's being destroyed as we destroy these last few places. So at the moment, construction is proceeding. Two First Nations, West Moberly and Prophet River, are fighting for their rights in court, but there's a real danger that because of the uh, continued construction of the dam, that the harm could be done. Their access to and use of this land could be destroyed forever before the court case is finally resolved. BC Hydro, the entity that's building this thing, has admitted publicly that they don't even need the power for 30 years. Not only are you destroying something beautiful and sacred and important and rare in a region that's already been desecrated for so long, you're doing it for antiquated technology when you don't need to. That's the most painful injustice. Knowing the memory that a place holds allows for young people to form their identity. That's why it's critical that our youth have access to land and have access to those stories and those cultural activities. Our people, they don't have to have uh, law degrees to go out. They have their own, the land base. I try to teach them what I know. Unless they actually understand that, it, that it's impacting actual human beings, I don't see how any change can happen if they're not willing to put the connections together. My people and my ancestors for the last three generations, we've been dying death by a thousand cuts. This generation has kind of woken up and realized that 
if we don't save what little that's left, if we don't reinvigorate the spirit of these treaties and these relationships between populations, we're doomed. And that's, that's a future I don't want to be a part of.